Okay. The first time I ever sang the national anthem was before a homecoming basketball game at my high school on Long Island. I was 16 years old. All I remember is being so nervous that I had this death grip on the microphone cord. And after I finished singing, I walked over to where my mother was standing and I said, Mom, I can't open my hand. Hi, my name is Janine Stang, and I'm the National Anthem Girl. I grew up on Long Island, New York in a very normal, very Italian, very patriotic family. My great grandparents came here from Italy at the turn of the century. Every day after school and every weekend, I worked in my parents' bagel shop. We had the best bagels, but I really think that people came in just to see my mother. Everyone loved her, and there were lots of regulars, but there was one group that she had a major soft spot for, and that was our men and women in uniform. She always went above and beyond to make sure they felt like a million bucks when they came in. That really made an impression on me. I was always singing the national anthem at high school functions, later on in college, community events, just anywhere and everywhere I could. I loved singing the national anthem. In 2007, I moved to LA with the intention of recording a CD. I had a producer, had lots of connections, and I wound up spending all my savings on this album. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out to be something I was uber proud of and not the album where I would finally make it. It wasn't a good thing. My family thought I was staying in LA because I was having such a great time, but the truth was I didn't even have enough money to move back to New York, and I didn't want to tell them this. So here I was at this point in my life, 
tired from all the rejections of trying to self-start a music career, but most of all, I was concerned about my lack of direction and the time I spent floundering because of my when then. A when then is a statement that goes something like this. When I win the lottery, then I'll buy my parents a new house. When I feel motivated, then I'll go to the gym. My personal when then statement always went something like this. When I get that record deal and have a hit song, then I'm gonna give back. And I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I just knew when I'm this famous philanthropic artist, then I'm gonna give back and make a big difference. But my when then wasn't happening because my music career wasn't taking off. And most of all, because of the when then, I was feeling disgruntled. I'm not sure what specifically happened to cause it. Maybe I was just fed up, but something changed inside of me one day and I stopped the insanity of the when-then delusion and decided I'm gonna do what I can with what I have from where I am. I'd like to say I came up with that, but it's a modified Theodore Roosevelt quote. So I asked myself, what do I have? I mean, well, I could sing, and the one song that I loved to sing was the national anthem. It was a song that I believed in, and I'd been singing it practically all my life. What if I could use that song to promote a dialogue about patriotism and pride? And when I did that, when I attached myself to something that was bigger than me, instead of feeling sorry for myself, that's when my mind and my heart began to get on a roll. And shortly after that, it occurred to me, you know, nobody's ever sung the national anthem in all 50 states. That would be perfect. Some people run marathons for a cause, this will be my marathon. I'll promote patriotism by being the first person to sing the Star Spangled Banner in all 50 states. Now, how do I do that? Okay, here's the deal. I had no corporate sponsorships, no over-the-top connections, no booking agent, support team, and very little money in my bank account. How in the world was I gonna fly all over the country, including Alaska and Hawaii, and sing the national anthem in every state. Then a light bulb sort of went off in my head as I realized something. Since I was 16 and over the years, I'd already sung at events in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Texas, Arkansas, Maryland, Georgia, Massachusetts, and California. So I started off the mission with nine states already under my belt. Just 41 states to go. So I was all set. With the money I had in my savings, I was just gonna pay as I went along and hope for the best. One foot in front of the other. And one other thing. In every place I was going, every state, every event, the focus was gonna be on the melody as it was written. No vocal acrobatics, no poetic license. This song was not gonna be my American Idol audition. This was not my song, it was our song. So that was settled. All I had left to figure out was how to sing the national anthem in 41 states to make all 50. Okay, so my newfound mission officially kicked off in Florida on July 3rd, 2012. I sang the national anthem for the single A Tampa Yankees at George Steinbrenner Park. Okay, so we are here in the main lobby of the Tampa Yankees. So I thought that we would video some things so that you all could see the different memorabilia uh, from the Yankees that's here. So we have a picture of George and Joan Steinbrenner, some trophies. I don't think this is the real one because I think it would be in glass and somebody would be yelling at me right now because I'm touching it. This is my favorite piece of the whole place. So there you have it. So we're gonna go upstairs in a little while. This right here is a, um, a artifact as well. It's in my hair clip because it's really humid outside and uh, I, I'm trying to keep it back so I don't look like a, a crazy person when I go out there and sing. Florida was state number 10 and I was off to the races. Next, I sang in Williamsport, Pennsylvania before the Williamsport Crosscutters minor league baseball game. 
Then it was on to Newport, Rhode Island, where I sang in the company of Pete Sampras at the Tennis Hall of Fame Championship Weekend. After that, I sang the Denver Outlaws at Mile High Stadium. Then it was on to Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio for the Reds versus the Mets game, my first performance at a Major League Baseball stadium. State number 15 was a pro bull riders event in Greensboro, North Carolina, and the spectacle of an Italian girl from Long Island surrounded by a sea of cowboy hats. I finished out 2012 at another pro bull riders event, this one in Las Vegas, Nevada, broadcast on CBS Sports. So 2012 was over, 16 states under my belt, so I felt like I was making, you know, some progress. But with 34 states still left to go, I was starting to feel the enormity of what I had committed to taking on. I started off 2013 in the Windy City for another Pro Bowl Riders event. State number 18, I sang the anthem for the High School Dream Bowl in Salem, Virginia. I also got a lesson on how brutally cold and windy the Southeast can be at the end of January. In July 2013, I sang the national anthem before a lacrosse event sponsored by Nike in Beaverton, Oregon, bringing my total states up to 19. This event was also where I received a pair of fluorescent yellow Nikes that would become my permanent travel companions throughout every airport on my journey. So for the entire year of 2013, I only added four states to my total. Not bad, I said 19 states down, 31 more to go. I wish I could have added more, but I had limited resources. And hey, who cared how long it took me to sing the anthem in all 50 states? I mean, it's not like there was a time limit, right? Wrong. It was January 2014, and I was in Baltimore, Maryland. As I was shutting the trunk of my boyfriend's car, I noticed something on the license plate. It said, starspangled200.com. I grabbed my phone, went to the website. The Star Spangled Banner was turning 200 years old that year, 2014 on September 14th. Oh my gosh, what are the odds? I said, that's it. That has to be the completion date, the goal that brings this whole thing home. What better way to raise awareness for the song and all the brave men and women it represents? The 200th anniversary, of the national anthem. I had never been so excited and so panicked at the same time. It also meant that I had exactly nine months to sing the national anthem in 31 states. Cue the hyperventilating. Okay, so that wouldn't be so bad. I mean, that only meant what, like three or four states a month? I could do that, right? I had to find events and convince people to book me to sing at them in 31 states. And of course, figure out how to pay for all of it while not getting kicked out of my apartment. My bank account would probably get me through about five or six states. I remember I converted my bedroom to what I called the situation room. I called every major college, minor league, major league, teams, charity events, anything I could find. I would explain to them what I was doing, and hopefully if they didn't hang up on me, I would get booked. Janine Stang, AK National Anthem Girl, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be on. Well, you know, the, singing in all 50 states, that is an ambitious goal. I just, I felt it was a need. Um, you know, the National Anthem is turning 200 on September 14th. And uh, even prior to realizing that, I always said, I'd like to sing the anthem in all 50 states. I can tell in your voice that's truly a passion of yours. It's really to promote awareness for the fact that the national anthem is not just, you know, like I said, a formality. And there was also one other thing. I decided I wanted to give back even more. The sole purpose of the journey was to honor our brave and raise awareness that the song our armed forces give meaning to was about to turn 200. So I got in touch with a woman named Carolyn Blaschick. She's the founder of Operation Gratitude, which is an organization that sends out thousands of care packages every year to military personnel who are deployed 
And in those care packages, there's always a handwritten note to people in uniform. So I said to Carolyn, I'm going to all these venues across the U.S. What if every place I go, I set something up so private citizens, everyday people from all over the country write thank you notes to go into these packages that you're sending out? And Carolyn said, go for it. So with that, the bar on my journey was raised again. I was actually going to be able to attach this act of gratitude to those who serve while I was promoting the National Anthem's 200th. One thing we all do, no matter how big or small the game, is stand, remove our hat, as we listen to the nation's song. One woman is trying to remind everyone just how important that is. Meet Janine Stang better known as the National Anthem Girl. Stang is performing the Star Spangled Banner in all 50 states this year. Alabama is number 20 under her belt as she spreads patriotism throughout the country. Along with singing our country's song, the National Anthem Girl is collecting handwritten thank you cards that will go into care packages for deployed military and veterans. Alabama marked the first venue where I implemented the thank you cards for the troops, and people loved it, which was very exciting for me to see college students, older veterans, young kids all come together at a table, even kneeling on pavement, expressing their gratitude in their own words to those who protect our freedom. The mission was coming to life. So with this new sense of urgency, I started to get a little wiser with how I did my bookings to sing the anthem, meaning, trying to choose states that were next to each other, which helped alleviate the expensive flights due to the dartboard planning approach that I'd used early on. So on this particular trip down south, I sang the anthem at the University of Mobile baseball game in Alabama. The next day, it was another baseball game for Southern Miss University in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And the next day, a baseball game for the Tulane Green Wave in New Orleans, Louisiana. Three days, three states. Now I was getting into a rhythm. On April 1st, I had the honor of singing the anthem at the Orpheum Theater in Phoenix for Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell's Patriot Tour event. She wants to get all 50 states done by September 14th because that's going to be the 200th anniversary of our national anthem. So I want you to give her a big Phoenix, Arizona welcome. Please welcome the anthem girl, Amy Sang. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light or the land of the free and the home of the brave. The line at my thank you card table was so long. Priceless. The next day, I flew to Utah, state number 24, for the Utah Grizzlies minor league hockey team. Now, this was an interesting one. In the past, when I've sung on ice, they give you a rug to stand on, but not here. They swore it was safer, but I was there with these high heel boots on with hockey players whizzing past me during the intros. Thank God I did not fall flat on my face. The Utah trip was also when I realized that it seemed a few people were beginning to hear about what I was doing. This nice couple who had been following me on Twitter came to the game with their kids, took me to dinner, and dropped me off back at the airport. This journey was starting to make me feel like we are really all one big family. It was nice. My next state was Delaware, my halfway point, state number 25 out of 50. I was scheduled to sing the national anthem for the University of Delaware women's lacrosse team, the Blue Hens. Delaware was not only my midpoint state, it was also my planes, trains, and automobiles state. 
To get to Wilmington, I had flown from Utah to New York, took a taxi to my brother's house, then took a subway to the Amtrak station and rode the train down to Delaware, where I literally took the scenic route to the stadium on foot. But I did get good photos. After I sang the anthem, I rode back to the train station on a bus. The only thing I was missing was a boat. My next state that marked the beginning of the second half of my journey was West Virginia, state number 26. West Virginia. Let me tell you about West Virginia. I was scheduled to sing the anthem for the Musselman High School Appleman baseball game in Inwood, West Virginia. The day of the event, the game got rained out. So since I was already there and needed a venue so I could add West Virginia to my list of states, the nice people at Musselman High offered me an alternative sporting event. Donkey basketball. Up until this point, I'd sung on diamonds, gridirons, ice, tennis courts, in boxing rings. Never before had I sung in the presence of donkeys. If you told me when I started out that I'd be promoting patriotism around a bunch of high schoolers in helmets, indoors, shooting baskets while sitting on the back of donkeys, it was actually pretty fun. Smelly, obviously, but fun. Sing in all 50 states. Last night, she sang for our donkey basketball game, making us the 26th state in which she has sung. At this time, Janine Stang, who lives in California, is visiting us here this morning. And she is going to open up our announcements and our day by singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light or the land of the free and the home of the brave? The next day, I traveled to Charleston, South Carolina to perform the anthem for the single A Charleston River Dogs of the South Atlantic League, marking my singing of the Star Spangled Banner in state number 27. And right after South Carolina, I headed back up to New York to get ready for what would be my most important appearance yet. Quick sidebar. One of the questions I'm asked most often is, was I getting compensated for singing the anthem at all these events? The answer is no. I footed the bill for all my travels to the 27 states I'd completed thus far. That's plane tickets, train tickets, rent-a-cars, cabs, clothes, Ubers, buses, hotels, meals, websites, printing my thank you cards for all the troops, all self-funded meaning my own personal savings, credit cards, frequent flyer miles, all of which were getting close to bottoming out. So back to my most important upcoming appearance. I was scheduled to appear live on the Fox and Friends morning show on April 14th with 27 states down and 23 still to go. I had just recently put together a crowdfunding page to A, make more people aware of what I was trying to accomplish, and B, help raise funds through donations so I can complete my journey by September 14th. This is about us uniting as one nation for one song, our song, the Star Spangled Banner. So please help support this mission. Help me get this message out to all 50 states by September 14th our national anthem's 200th anniversary. An appearance on a nationally televised morning program could not hurt my chances. So far, she has checked 27 states off, hopes to complete her task by this September when our national anthem 
turns 200 years old. Joining us now, Janine Stang. Well, so 27 down. Yes. We actually have a map right here to take a look at here. So the red indicates those that you have performed in already. You're yes. booked in the pink states, mm -hmm. the brown states. You're working on it. Yes. And you're going to make this happen. Why did you start this? Really, there's got to be respect. And I think that's what my mission is, is to bring respect and highlight that so people can say, you know what, this is an awesome, you know, song. You've got a job in Los Angeles. How do you, how do you find the time? <laughs> I, how can you afford to do this? I, I, I don't, it's amazing that I've been able to do this. I've funded the whole half pretty much by myself. Uh, it's a miracle that I did that. But I need to get done by September 14th, and I need people's help at this point. National exposure can be a beautiful thing. Since I first started, I spent all my time on the phone calling places to see if they'd have me to sing the anthem, and then trying to explain what I was doing and why. And now I was getting inundated with people contacting me, offering me venues. I remember I got home from the studio and was up for two days straight, fielding calls and replying to emails. Sitting in my apartment, I felt like an air traffic controller. I had all these flight schedules and maps everywhere, trying to figure out which venues were close to state borders, where the airports were, and how many states I could hit within a two hour radius of my anchor state. And best of all, locking in anthem performances in states. With a little under five months left and 23 states to go, May, June, and July could literally be described with one word, whirlwind. Here we have Janine Sting, and uh, she's, her, she's attempting to go uh, to all 50 states and sing our national anthem in every state. Can you tell my listeners and my viewers on Ustream here um, why you're doing this? I'm doing this because I absolutely love America, and I love what the National Anthem represents. It's, um, it's not just a song. It's our song. And how many are you up to right now? 27? 27. All yes. Right. Tomorrow will be 28. Tomorrow will be 28. Where are you going tomorrow? New Mexico. Oh, New Mexico. May 6, 2014, I sang the anthem for the AAA Albuquerque Isotopes in Albuquerque, New Mexico. On May 15th, I was in Wisconsin and sang for the University of Milwaukee Panthers baseball team. Wisconsin. Something different happened in Wisconsin. After hearing about a study that said one third of all Americans don't know the words to the national anthem, a Milwaukee reporter from a local news station had me walk up to random people in town and do impromptu duets to see how many people knew all the words. Oh, say can you see By the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through Through <laughs> The Check this out O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare Bunch of bombs in the air. No, 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 no. Gave proof through the night that our land was still there. And our flag, our flag, our flag. yeah, and our, and our flag too. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Yay! Wow, that was amazing. May 22nd found me in Clorinda, Iowa for the Clorinda Chamber of Commerce annual golf tournament. And I think that was the first time I ever performed the anthem without a microphone. And the home of the brave.
The next day, I was in Nebraska for the Omaha Parks and Rec Bridge Beats event. And the next day, I sang in Merrillville, Missouri. Missouri. Okay, so I'd never been to this part of the country before, so as I was driving through the state, I kept looking at all these great views of the countryside with this big sky and all these cows and horses. They were like paintings, and I kept stopping the car to take pictures for my social media pages. It was just so surreal to me. And then some Missouri Good Samaritans saw me by the side of the road and stopped to see if I needed help. I was like, no, I'm just taking pictures of all the cows. Missouri was also the venue where two local DJs had me convinced that both snipe hunting and cow tipping were real sports. And they even offered to take me snipe shooting. Yeah, snipe hunting is another thing. Um, you got to call them in. It's not. It's kind of off season. Call though. them in. Well, because normally they. Well, oh, they a live snipe out in, is an animal. Yeah. Who just asking? I want to know what a snipe looks like now. Janine, there's no such thing as snipe. <laughs> Comedians. May 26th, Tulsa, Oklahoma, it was another humbling intersection of sports and patriotism. I sang the anthem at the Patriot Cup Invitational Golf Tournament hosted by Folds of Honor. Folds of Honor provides scholarships to children of fallen or disabled heroes. I'll never forget the sight I saw as I was going into the building to sing. Two little boys dressed in patriotic colors standing at this memorial statue out front as I walked closer, I realized they weren't just playing around near the statue. They were looking at the names inscribed on it, looking for a name, their dad, who had made the ultimate sacrifice in combat. They were gold star kids. While so many kids are eating hot dogs and hamburgers, happy to have a day off of school, these two sons were remembering their dad. Since that day, I use that experience of seeing those two little boys to explain the difference, the very important difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Veterans Day honors those who served and are still with us. Memorial Day is for the fallen. Oklahoma, state number 33, was also where I was coined for the first time. I was given a challenge coin which is a medallion bearing a military insignia. My coin was presented to me by American hero, Major Ed Polito, who lost his leg when he was hit by an IED in 2004. You'd think my stop in Alaska would be for a dog sledding event, but it was actually singing the anthem for the collegiate summer league baseball game between the Anchorage Bucks and the Glacier Pilots. It was Military Appreciation Day at the ballpark. Also, while I was there, I saw my first ever moose while I was on a sightseeing trip at Katmai Land National Park near Anchorage, where I also encountered a slight timing problem. You see, that time of year, it doesn't get dark, so you can lose track of time. I came very close to getting locked inside the park. That was June 8th in Alaska, state number 34. A week later, I marked off Kansas as state number 35. I sang the anthem for the independent league, Kansas City T-Bones. Welcome to Community America Ballpark. I'm Matt Folks, Director of Broadcasting and Media Relations, along with Janine Stang, better known as the National Anthem Girl. This will be her 35th state out of, uh, you know, about 50 that you're gonna try to hit before middle of September. That's 15 left. Uh, it's been quite an undertaking. 9-11 has a, a huge impact on everyone in this country, yeah. but, but especially people in New York. Yeah. Did that precipitate any of this for you? Uh, it had definitely played a part, absolutely. You know, I, I was there when it happened. I was actually supposed to be in the city that day. My mom was like, I don't think you should go, and I ended up not going, and thank God I'm here today. The national anthem causes you to think of those things, and uh, it was tough, you know, and, and that really drives it home how important it is for us to be one. What's great about this is, you know, going through every state, you're really promoting awareness, and people are really thinking, I should tell my kids what this really means, and it's it's causing a, a dialogue that, you know, I'm happy to help, uh, you know, perpetuate. So that
that brings us up to state number 36. Oh my goodness, Wallace, Idaho. I was given the opportunity to sing somewhere very special. I sang the national anthem from the center of the universe. Wallace, Idaho is this little mining town of about 800 people, and they claim to actually have the center of the universe right there in the middle of the intersection of Bank and Sixth Street. So when I got there, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it turned out to be one of the stops that I talk about the most. Elvis joined me on stage, an artist gave me a litho portrait of Marilyn Monroe, and I received a silver coin that was salvaged from the Great Fire of 1910. But when the time came for me to sing the anthem, it was like something out of a movie. The whole town showed up. It was such an incredible experience. An entire community standing shoulder to shoulder to honor America. When I had gotten there, the organizer of the event, Dave DeRuz, said to me, when you get here, just follow me and you'll see me because I'm in a yellow ATV. This is the first time ever I am here with David DeRuz, who is driving me through Wallace, Idaho on a ATV. So we dropped off my bags. We went zip lining. We had so much fun. Wallace, Idaho had like so much stuff going on. Everybody was so friendly. We have screwed it up every year for the last five years. Good, <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it right. It's on, so you're good. <laughs> I needed Idaho, State 36, the center of the universe, and my breath of fresh air. Okay, I still had 14 states to go and a little under 12 weeks to get it done. After I said goodbye to all the nice people in Wallace, I drove back west to Washington State to sing for the Class A Spokane Indians. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> After I was done with Spokane and Idaho, I was on my way back and I was in the airport standing online. In front of me was a man who was carrying a U.S. Army garment bag. And, you know, I always would strike up conversation if I saw somebody was in the military. And I was like, hey, I was like, where are you headed? And instead, he told me from where he had just come. And that was his friend's funeral. He escorted his friend's body home. It was Corporal Justin Klaus. He had given his life for our freedom on June 8th, 2014. This was his friend. And he had just been with all of Justin's family. After he checked through security, I turned around and I remember looking through, he was going through gate A. And I just watched him like this solitary figure with this heavy burden walking alone.
have you here. Welcome to the program. Thanks. It is the Joe Pag Show. National Anthem Girl, her own self on my show. I'm glad to have you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Now, I'm guessing you do Afternoon, the National friends. Anthem. This is Dr. Keitha, Feeding the Family, Mind, Body, and Spirit. I have a guest with us today. She is best known as a singer on a mission. We welcome the National Anthem Girl to our broadcast. Welcome to the broadcast, Janine Bang. You know her as National Anthem Sirius XM channel lady. He's back inside your radio, outside the barrel, Flip Rasmussen. We're thinking outside the barrel, and it is our good friend, Janine Stang. Hello, Anthem Girl Janine. How are you? Hello, Flint. How are you? And now we welcome in the National Anthem Girl. Janine Stang. She's on a mission. She's on, on a mission to sing our beautiful song in all 50 states and honor her, our nation's heroes. Janine's performance tonight is the 38 states and she made it the beautiful state of Wyoming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our National Anthem. My next stop was in Cody, Wyoming for the Cody Stampede Rodeo. The president of the rodeo, I didn't even realize rodeos had presidents, had actually seen me on the news back in April and invited me to sing at the stampede. The people there were like it was the wild, wild west. But I tell you, there was an opening prayer and every single person bowed their head. One nation under God. And when the anthem was sung, everyone stopped, stood with their hands over their heart, and sang along. It was such a moving experience being right there in the middle of what was truly the heart and soul of America. As you might have guessed, July 4th, I was somewhere singing the national anthem. The venue was Red Lodge, Montana, and the event, what are the odds? Another rodeo. So you just sit on top of the horse and then you just hold on to that. And it only matters the eight seconds, right? Everything else is. Your life is all about those eight seconds. You guys should do Pilates. Do you Pilates? Yeah. Do you do it? No. We should. Cowboy Pilates. That's what they should do. All right. Nice to meet you guys. Do good. Do well. The event was great. People were so into it. Fourth of July. But something else from my visit to Montana literally stopped me in my tracks. People were coming up to my thank you card table, like always, lining up to fill out cards for the troops and an older man walked up to the table and was watching the others filling out cards. And I could tell their actions meant a lot to him. So I asked, did you serve? And he looked at me and said, no, I didn't. And I've regretted it every day of my life. He went on to explain how when he was 18, several of his friends had gone off to serve and a lot of them didn't come back. As if on cue, the wind picked up and the thank you cards began to blow off the table. With tears still in his eyes, he told me he would be back. About 10 minutes later, he came walking back up and handed me a rock. He said, this is for you, from Montana with love. He told me he looked for a rock that was shaped like a heart and he placed it on the pile of thank you cards to keep them from blowing away again. I always say, this rock, was the most priceless gift anyone gave me on my journey. You may have regrets in your past, but never let that stop you from serving now or in the future. State number 40 was Indiana at the South Shore Car Show in South Shore, Indiana. State number 41 was New Hampshire. My first NASCAR event singing the anthem before the Sprint Cup at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And a 
town called Loudon, no less. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. 42 under your belt. <laughs> I continued my New England loop singing the anthem for WTSA radio in Brattleboro, Vermont. Do you know where you are? You know what's funny is I have to think about that because I did say what state, but I do know I am in Vermont. So we're state number 42. So this is your stop in Vermont. You're going yes. to be singing the national anthem. I literally anthem just crossed the state line. On Vermont soil right here. <laughs> Out. The sure sun is did. out, and I it's know. doing that just because who is arriving in our wonderful state today? Janine Stang. Janine Stang, otherwise known as National Anthem Girl. I headed up to Sanford, Maine, where I sang for the Sanford Mainers of the New England Summer Collegiate League. Something that never happened before happened there. Bruce the Moose, the Mainers mascot, made a beeline over to my table and filled out a thank you card for the troops. It was the first time a mascot had ever done that for me. And as crazy as it sounds, that image of a man dressed as a moose in a baseball uniform was pouring his heart out with words that he was writing in that thank you card. It meant so much to me. August 2014, my last full month before the deadline, started off with an upper Midwestern bang. Over the course of four days, I sang the anthem for the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks of the Independent Pro Baseball League in Fargo, North Dakota. Janine's performance tonight in Fargo marks North Dakota as her 44th state. Please join the National Anthem Girl, Janine Singh. The American Legion Division II Championship in Millbank, South Dakota, where I took lots of photos of hay. On behalf of American Legion First Nine, the city of Millbank, the city of South Dakota, we present Janine Stang with a badge to commemorate the day. Janine, thank you for your passion in honoring our great nation and our true heroes, both past, present, and future servicemen. Janine, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey. Then I drove to Minnesota and sang for the St. Paul Saints, another IPBL team in St. Paul, Minnesota. An adorable group of kids, they were all cousins, sang with me on the field. That was three states, four days, 46 states down, and just four more to go before September 14th. The end was in sight. State number 47 was my first trip ever to Kentucky to sing for the AAA Louisville Bats at Louisville Slugger Field. The Kentucky stop was unique because I had something I'd never had before, my own film crew. They followed me around from the moment I landed at the airport. When I saw the footage all put together, even I was surprised at how much I was cramming into each day on the road. So this is Louisville, Kentucky. This is my first time ever at this airport or here. I'm really excited because it's my 47th state and um, I get to sing for the Louisville Bats tomorrow night. Hi, this is uh, my uh, house in Kentucky. There's not horses here, but I think they're all horses. We just haven't found them yet. Here's breakfast. It's uh, real exciting. Uh, a lot of yogurt I didn't eat yet. So I probably should eat. Okay, so I'm printing my boarding pass. I typically use my app. I feel like all I do is print boarding passes. A criminal file, and this will bring the whole new meaning to the term safe driving. And here are the other. Uh, 
time is always of essence when you're tweeting things out because you have to tell people when you're going to be on air. You don't always know when you're going to be on air. On air so. This is Janine Stang on the tour of the U.S. where she will sing the Star Spangled Banner in all 50 states by September the 14th. That's the 200 year anniversary of the song that was written by Francis Scott Key. Tell us, uh, I'm so interested in what inspired this idea in the first place. Why did you come up with this idea to do this? I love singing the national anthem. I love what it represents. You think? Uh, yeah, I, I would have to at this point, you know. Okay, this is it, people. We're going to the Louisville Slugger Fields for the Louisville Bats game in Kentucky, State 47. They have my intro? Yeah, I pulled it right off the drop off. That's good. I want to make sure it says 47. So all you have to do is hold it like this. Kentucky venue was also memorable because between innings, I went into the stands to spend some time with some veterans who were at the game, listening to their stories about serving our country and getting their viewpoints on what it meant to be a patriot. The most profound of these was a 92-year-old World War II veteran named Cliff, who stormed Normandy on D-Day. And he told me what I believe is the most clear and concise definition of patriotism that I've ever heard. Well, what would you tell the youth of today about America? What would you tell them about this country? What would be the advice you'd give them? Well, the first thing I would tell them, this is your land, and you've got to protect it, love it, and live on it. That's three important things. I always pass on his advice. In fact, anyone who asks me about my journey will absolutely hear about Cliff. The next day, I was on a plane headed to Michigan, state number 48. I sang the anthem at Comerica Park before a game between the Detroit Tigers and the Seattle Mariners. Oh, no.
Ladies and gentlemen, Janine Stang with our national anthem. A week later, I was in Honolulu, Hawaii, State 49. I sang aboard the historic battleship USS Missouri, anchored in Pearl Harbor. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Hawaii was incredible. The USS Missouri and USS Arizona Memorial sit side by side in Pearl Harbor. They bookend World War II. An officer gave me a tour of Hickman Air Base, Fort Island, and some of the buildings still have shrapnel damage. 2,403 souls were lost right there, 75 years prior. And our flag is still there. Also in Hawaii, the Today Show was there to tape an interview segment about my mission. The segment would hopefully air on the day I made it to state number 50. One state left to go. It almost didn't seem real. Okay, let's take a moment to recap and fill in some frequently asked questions. Where did I come up with the name National Anthem Girl? I was scheduled to sing the anthem at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. On the way there, traffic was so bad that I barely made it there. Right before I was supposed to go on, I got out of my car, rushed to the stadium entrance, right past all the people in line, and told the gate attendant, look, you gotta let me in, I'm the national anthem girl. And once I got in, I thought two things. One, so much for security, and two, that's a really good name. So when I got back home, I bought the domain handle and went with it from there. Another question. How did you keep things rolling all by yourself? Two words, social media. Throughout my journey, I was constantly posting to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to let people know where I was, where I'd be next, which state number I was up to. Some nights, depending on what time zone I was in, I'd wake up at 3 a.m. with one eye open just to update any status for the next event. I don't know what I would do if I was only able to rely on faxing press releases or calling people because I was on a plane or driving most of the time. And it was because of social media that Heather Nauert from Fox News caught wind of my goal and shared it with her producers, which culminated in my appearance on Fox & Friends, which wound up being the turning point in the national awareness for my journey. If it wasn't for this little device, I might not have made it. Next question. After two years promoting the anthem, did I receive many marriage proposals along the way? Yes, I did. Question. After performing the anthem so far in 49 states, after two very intense years, how does it feel to finally get to the finish line with state number 50? It feels like I've truly seen the real America. On 49 separate occasions, I had performed our song for the people that make up this nation. At every ballpark, every speedway, every basketball court, every hockey rink, every rodeo arena, I would always look in the stands to see people who understood that regardless of what team they wanted to win and 
which politician they would vote for, in the 90 seconds it took for the anthem to be sung, we were all as one. One home, one voice, one nation under God. Every now and then I'd look up and see some young person not singing along, looking around like they were bored. And I prayed that kid would have someone in their life who would just explain to them just why this song was so important. That this song, it's not a formality and singing it is not something we have to do, but it's something we get to do. Other times I'd look up and see a person with a certain look in their eye and their hand over their heart, rendering a salute, and you could tell they had served or were close to someone who had. These were the people I would focus on while I would sing. After one performance, a veteran came up to me and said, thank you for singing the anthem the way it was meant to be sung. And I looked at him and said, oh my gosh, like you served, it's because of you that I can even sing this song. I also got to see up close and personal the debt of gratitude that Americans feel for those who put their lives on the line every day to protect us. Thank you so much for being so brave. You kept us so safe. Service, and may God you richly you bless you, you, your family, and your fellow service personnel. From the bottom of my heart for your sacrifice and love for our country. Thank you I for keeping our country safe. You're my hero. So yeah, I've seen America, and I've learned two things. America is beautiful, and Americans are beautiful. Because at the end of the day, what I've witnessed on this journey is that we're a country of dreamers, and we're also fighters. Deep down, we all want what's best for our country, and especially for the next generation. Last question. Who or what was your motivation? I believe I did it for the heroes. The men and women who sacrifice everything to serve our country, believing in something bigger than themselves. I remember their faces. World War II, Korean War, Desert Storm, Vietnam veterans, the Purple Heart recipients, the worried yet proud faces of dads and moms, brothers and sisters whose loved ones were currently deployed, the Gold Star parents, they made a mark on my life. I'll never be the same as a result of meeting these people. And I did it for the people of America, the ones who needed a gentle reminder that we're all in this together, and that freedom is not free. And I did it for my mother, Patty, who passed away from breast cancer in 2011. How much do I wish she could have been here to see all that's happened these last two years? She was the kind of mother who would have slapped me silly if I wasn't using my gifts to give to others in some way. And my mother never told me to do something patriotic. She showed me by example. Jersey Girls in the house, studio filling up, and now the beautiful Janine Stang is in our nook. All right, you've probably heard this name a lot, especially in the last few weeks, as her journey has come to fruition. Everything she has dedicated the last two years to is, is finally culminated in this last week on this two-year journey to sing the national anthem in all 50 states. Now, Janine, where did this idea come from? I just always love singing the national anthem. I sang it since I was in high school. I always wanted to do something to give back. So I realized nobody ever sang it in all 50 states. And nobody had ever done that before. No, now I understand why nobody's ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee, state number 50. The end of the road. This was it. As my plane was landing in Nashville, I remember thinking to myself, this is the last time I'll ever mention the name of a state 
with a number attached to it. So my journey would end on August 28th at LP Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee, singing the national anthem before the Tennessee Titans played the Minnesota Vikings. As usual, my day started out early, doing interviews, meeting with local media. Uh, Janine is going for singing the national anthem in all 50 states. Tonight at the Titans game, the state of Tennessee is number 50 on our list. So by state number 50, it's pretty easy to, to get a, a national anthem gig somewhere in the state of Tennessee? Yeah, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that difficult. I'm very happy to be, you know, singing for the Titans is a big deal. And so the response has been really good everywhere you've gone? Yeah, I, you know what I love about it? It's because they, uh, the people are really embracing this whole concept of, you know, being grateful, attaching the meaning of the national anthem to the people who represent it. It's, it's a good thing that the media is really catching on because it shows that we really are behind our troops, and I love that. Um, but you have now traveled to sing at all of these big games in all the states, and you are wrapping it up tonight right here in Nashville. Yeah, I'm so excited. Number 50. I know. How are you <laughs> feeling? I mean, are you feeling, are you like, probably a little bit of relief that this is it? Sentimental. I was even awarded the flag of Tennessee by the governor's office. This is to certify that the accompanying flag of the state of Tennessee, this flag that I'm holding, has been flown over the Tennessee State Capitol for you, Janine Stay. I was so busy that what was about to happen hadn't really registered yet. I just told myself this was like every other state, so things would feel as normal as possible. After a full day of promoting, I was all ready to take my last trip to the middle of a field to sing our anthem in my 50th state. Did I mention there was not a cloud in the sky all day? Currently, it's 85 degrees. Clear skies expected to continue into this evening. Your Nashville weather today, clear, dry, and plenty of sunshine. If you're heading out to LP tonight to see the Titans face the Vikings, it's going to be a hot one. Clear skies in the forecast. Like, I, I told God, I don't, you can't. Like no rain on any of my events. Uh, so tonight's gonna be good. So no, no rain outs, no cancellations, no. Have they all just gone off flawlessly? Thank God. When I went down for sound check, everything was clear. But then, as I stood on the sideline minutes before I was scheduled to sing, storm clouds rolled over. Then a few raindrops. And by the second or third line of the song, I was in a monsoon-type downpour. I did not see that coming. But you know what? At that point, it didn't really matter. Despite the fact that I was literally getting drenched and fighting the wind to keep the hair out of my face, I knew that my mission was accomplished. Two years ago, when I started this journey, Never did I imagine it would be such a life-changing experience. I was getting ready for my first interview, doing my hair, and I prayed to God and I said, please let my mom know that I finished. Some photographs came out from those moments with the rain suspended all around me. Someone posted a comment saying, the raindrops were tears of joy from heaven. I'd like to think they were my mom, wanting me to know 
she had gotten my message. I guess it would be important to tell you what I did on the National Anthem's 200th anniversary, which was September 14th, 2014. They wanted me to sing at Fort McHenry. I got to sing the National Anthem at the Star Spangled Buoy in the eye line of where Francis Scott Key was looking when he saw our flag was still there 200 years to the day. I hope when people see this and realize how crazy and how fun and how emotional this journey was that they'll look at themselves and say, what can I do? Because you're never too young to make a difference. You're never too old to make a difference. You just have to start where you are. You have to do what you can with what you have from where you are.
It's been an amazing journey. And I'm so happy that I got to do this. It's been an honor. And all 50. God bless America.